So when Dr. Martin Luther King was alive, he uh, right before he died, he was on the verge of you know starting the Poor People's Campaign because his uh, scope had expanded from racism to poverty to anti-Vietnam War and so on. And this took a bit of adjustment from many of his followers. But then he was killed, and the movement, which he called the Poor People's Campaign, never took off. But now there's another uh, reverend, Dr. William Barber II, um, and Reverend Liz Tio Harris, if I pronounced it right, which I probably didn't, um, who are, you know, bringing the Poor People's Campaign back to life. And so tomorrow uh, they're starting 40 days of nonviolent direct action in more than 30 states and in Washington, D.C. And so people are going to the state capitals. Um, so it says from coast to coast, poor and working poor people, clergy and activists will take to state houses and Capitol Hill to break the silence about the realities facing the 140 million people living in poverty. They didn't say if this was worldwide or just in, in our country. I think it must just be the U.S., because there's many more, you know, internationally, okay? And uh, so each week they're, you know, they're doing this for 40 days. Each week they're emphasizing a certain group of people. So the first week, which starts tomorrow, um, is called Somebody's Hurting Our People, and that's focusing on children, women, and people with disabilities and poverty. Okay. The second week is linking systemic racism and poverty. So that there, they'll be discussing voting, right, voting rights, immigration, xenophobia, Islamophobia, and the mistreatment of indigenous communities. These are all really important issues. Yeah. That was only week two. <laughs> week three is the war economy. So on militarism and the proliferation of gun violence, also important. Week four is the right to health and a healthy planet. So ecological devastation and health care. Week five is everybody's got the right to live. So this is focusing on education, living wage jobs, income, and housing. Week six is a new and unsettling force. And this is about confronting the distorted moral narrative. And then on June 23rd is the Global Day of Solidarity and sending forth call to action mass rally in Washington, D.C. Okay, this last one, you know, confronting the distorted moral narrative. I think that's quite important um, because when you read the news these, these days and you hear what's happening, it's like morality has gone out with the wind and voters don't seem to even care about if their elected representatives have moral character or not. Yeah, they'll just take anybody who entertains them and and follows their policies, even if that person lives a visibly unethical life and is visibly setting a bad example for young people. Yeah. So I would really like to see, I mean, all of these issues really ring a bell with me, but to really see that all of those issues relate directly to ethical conduct and morality. Yeah, we're not just talking social policy. We're talking about how we, as individuals and as a society, uh, live ethical conduct in the 21st century. 
you know? And we can't do it if we continue to exploit people and ignore the people in need. Yeah. When I was in Israel many years ago, um, I, uh, I made friends with one uh, Sufi uh, Iman, I guess you would call him, really wonderful, kind man. Uh, I visited him two times, I think, maybe three. And in one of those visits, he told me that in Islam, you're not allowed to own something that your neighbor cannot afford. Yeah? And I thought, wow, you know, wouldn't that change our whole society if we didn't own things that our neighbor could not afford. Yeah? And how much that would bring uh, equality in terms of wealth and stop uh, so much suffering and stop the, the, uh, the tension in society that arises when people don't have equal education, equal amounts of and types of food and so on. Yeah, so I think that's all very directly related to ethical conduct and morality. And it's something, you know, to really sp speak out about. Okay, so the first uh, rally, uh, I guess, starts tomorrow, and that's mostly at uh, capital, state capitals and the federal capital. Uh, and then they're also having a uh, training in various places uh, on non uh, civil disobedience and nonviolence, yeah, which some people here may want, want to attend. They have uh, one in, in Spokane. So if you want more information, the website is poorpeoplescampaign.org. So there is an active group, a very active group in Spokane. Yeah, oh, so they're going across the state to Olympia. That's very good. Yeah, yeah, because I know a couple of people from the Abbey went to one of their meetings before. Poor People's Campaign is getting involved in environmental inequity. So they came to Newport and interviewed some of us last Thursday about uh -huh. um, uh, large corporations coming in and polluting in poor areas. Wow, very good. Yeah. Well, that would fit under the one about ecological devastation, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay.